I'm Ron Paul. I'm a congressman from Texas, serving in my 10th term. I am the champion of the Constitution. You get the sense that the country is desperate for someone to show us the way. Not the old way, not the same way, but a new way. Ron Paul, who raised more than $5 million in the third quarter, trailing not far behind fellow Republicans like John McCain and Fred Thompson. Ron Paul, who has a huge internet following. He's a congressman, a physician who's delivered more than 4,000 babies. Ron Paul has been married to the same woman for 50 years, which means he doesn't come to the race with a lot of the assorted baggage that some of the other candidates for the White House do. So here's the question. Should more people be listening to what Ron Paul has to say? Ron Paul! Ron Paul! Ron Paul! Ron Paul! We have allowed our nation to be overtaxed and overregulated and overrun by bureaucrats. The founders would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. Matter of fact, if you look at every single problem we're facing today, it's because of the lack of respect for the rule of law and the Constitution. The right guy is the guy who's anti-government, anti-war, pro-personal liberty, pro-economic freedom. Vote for him, whatever party he is. And if you have to change parties to vote, that's like five clicks on the internet. It's not complicated. If you really want to have a choice between a real revolutionary candidate and someone out of a machine, well, this is what this can happen. Ron Paul brings together people of all races, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all political affiliation, because freedom is truth and truth is power, and we can live and be free in this country if we believe we can. John writes from West Virginia, yes, more people should listen. A rarity. A man of principle, integrity, and high values running for president. Exactly what America needs in this day and age. If you were president, would you work to phase out the IRS? Immediately. That's <laughs> what they call a softball. And, and you can only do that if you change our ideas about what the role of government ought to be. If you think the government has to take care of us from cradle to grave, and if you think our government should police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars on a foreign policy that we cannot manage, uh, you can't get rid of the IRS. But if you want to lower taxes, and if you don't want the government to quit printing the money to come up with shortfall and cause all the inflation, you have to change policy. Congressman Ron Paul, you appear to have consistent uh, principled integrity. Uh, Americans don't usually go for that. <laughs> 1,500 people packed into the War Memorial Auditorium to see Paul speak. The Republican is making ways for his anti-war limited government positions. This is just a small example of, of the types of things that are happening really across the country. Why are you resonating with, uh, with people out there? Is it because of your opposition to the war in Iraq? I think that's part of it. I think the message uh, obviously is popular enough. They say, yes, we like the ideas of freedom, the Constitution, limited government, less taxes. But I think the other part is people are worried more so than I think the politicians on the Hill understand. I believe you are the only man on the stage who opposes the war in Iraq. Are you out of step with your party? Is your party out of step with the rest of the world? If either of those is the case, why are you seeking its nomination? Well, I think the uh, party has lost its way because the uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party always advocated a non-interventionist foreign policy. No uh, nation building, no policing of the world. Republicans were elected to end the Korean War. The Republicans were elected to end the Vietnam War. There's a strong tradition of being anti-war uh, in the Republican Party. It is the constitutional position. It is the advice of the founders to follow a non-interventionist foreign policy. Stay out of entangling alliances. Be friends with countries. Negotiate and talk with them and trade with them. 
Our foreign policy has what the CIA calls blowback. It has unintended consequences. You can go back to 1953 when we put the Shah into power, or us supporting Osama bin Laden uh, right. and, and radicalizing uh, the Islamics to go after the Soviets, and that comes back as blowback. Peace is a powerful message, especially after the war has been going on and the people wake up and realize how many people die and how much it costs. Logic tells us that we can make a better world in a much easier way than causing wars. You just never heard this logic from someone who's actually going to run the country. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I message uh, brings us together it doesn't divide us I believe that when we overdo our military uh, aggressiveness what it does it actually weakens our national defense I mean we stood up to the Soviets they had 40,000 nuclear weapons now we're fretting day in and day night about third world countries that have no army navy or air force and we're getting ready to go to war Ron Paul says to a lot of people eager to hear this message you can be anti-war and be a conservative in fact, he says, if you're a real small government conservative, you have to be anti-war. His message is resonating, including, interestingly enough, from soldiers. According to one study, Congressman Paul received more campaign cash from members of the military than did any other Republican presidential candidate. And finally, Steve writes from Pennsylvania. Remember the line from the classic Simon and Garfunkel song, The Sound of Silence. The line that says the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and tenement halls. When I hear Ron Paul, sometimes I wonder whether I'm not listening to a latter-day prophet with the way he speaks truth about what our nation has come to. The words of the prophets are written on the subway walls.